let's start with this one case, but at the same time, conceptualize and generalize it. So if you'll indulge me a little bit, I want to sort of take you on a little bit of sort of what a researcher would do to look at this problem. So we basically said, look, here's basically what's happening. The old products being phased out and the new products being ramped in. That's conceptually what is happening. Many times, these old and new products are being shared and produced in the same exact facilities. So imagine what is happening. Somehow, you're phasing out the old, you're preparing for the new. There is this sort of mixture of the shared facilities. Somehow, these new products and their designs, you can be very aggressive with these designs and be very radical, but you realize that you're going to share the facilities, so you can't be that different. Somehow, the whole grandfathering process has to be thought through. The new product, how it is and what its utility is, etc., affects what its details are, affects the utility that, that customers would attribute to it. And I'll sort of, you know, how consumers behave was not very clear. Okay? Would consumers be so enamored with being green that they would rush to buy this new product and stay away from the old? Or would they really look at their pocketbooks and say, oh, forget it, green is good, but I can't pay for it? Okay. Which, by the way, is what a lot of marketeers are finding. Marketers are finding that people talk about being green, but when it comes time to spend money, ah, oh, well, you know, not for one dollar more. Okay. So it's not clear, and it's not clear how this will this will unfold. So here's basically what happens. So this is sort of uh, there was a selling season way be before that. There was a decision regarding design that had to be made by various companies. <clears throat> they started production ramp up. Regulation became effective. And what ended up happening was severe production delays for the new product. And surprisingly, it's not because the big companies hadn't planned for it. It's just that somewhere in the design of the big companies, big companies these days, by the way, outsource a lot of production to a lot of small companies. They probably do 20 to 30 percent of the value added. The remaining 70 percent from, comes from small companies. Why were they production bottleneck? Back to Indiana. Somewhere in the third and fourth tier of the supply chain, there were people making some valves and other things, and all the people in the industry picked the same valve design, and nobody told this little manufacturer that his order was going to jump by a factor of 10. So what did he do? He didn't have the capacity. He couldn't produce. The whole industry got stuck. So what ended up happening? Notice that depending on the perspective you take, this is doom or this is fun. Imagine you're the distributor and you had a pile of inventory. What would you do? You'd make money like there's no tomorrow. There was a company called Watsco. That was the company we were talking to. Now, too bad the guy didn't write us a check, but hey, uh, here's what they did. They basically bought $800 million worth of inventory. Their working, working capital went from $80 million to $800 million. What do they do? They bet the farm. And guess what happened? They were right. The entire industry was not ready with the new products. Everybody stuck with the old products. This thing was major chaos. Now imagine, imagine this being repeated over and over again. Now, in this, in this business, one of the things to note is that individual companies had to make design choices. Because one of the things you can do is when there is a regulatory change, you can do the bare minimum and pass the regulation. Or you can really jump in and get your engineers in and do a major design. There were no government regulations. Design is sort of a, you know, it's a laissez-faire. Do what you have to do. So there are many different potential design choices that could, that could happen out there. So the kinds of questions... If you were looking at, if you were looking at uh, uh, manufacturing in this setup, what are the kinds of things you'd be worried about? The kinds of things you'd be worried about is, hey, I don't quite know how much of the old product I should buy. I'm not quite sure how customer preferences will change. In between, of course, utilities were jumping in. Remember, they didn't want to build any new plants, so the utilities started giving special rebates to, to basically buy higher seer products. Finally, individual counties who had complete flexibility to issue occupancy permits, they started saying, okay, I know it's legal to have this product, but I won't give you an occupancy permit. Las Vegas, for example, magically decided that counties in Las Vegas would not get a permit unless you immediately adhered 
to the new standard. In other words, it was free for all. The one thing that would be known, so now think about this happening. If you're in the business of forecasting and manufacturing and your physical goods, this is in some sense a nightmare. But this is, if you're a distributor, a wonderful proposition. Pick your poison. Okay. One thing is for sure, this is a stimulus. It doesn't require money. This regulation and its impact is a stimulus. So, a couple of quick things. What are your decisions? For manufacturers, here are a few decisions. What design should I offer? You know, could I have some delays in ramp up and delivery? How could I continue to produce the old products and the new products in my system? So some things for manufacturers. For distributors, how much of the old product should I stock up before the production shuts down? How will consumer preferences change and how might they be influenced by all the incentives being provided by utilities, incentives provided, you know, things that the, the government is doing, etc. In fact, what will specific counties do? Will they all move in one or the other direction? Remember, every county which issues a building permit got to choose what it wants to do. They could just decide, hey, you know, I'm, it's clear to me that the federal government's law is not kicked in, but I could change mine. Completely independent. Just a few couple of pictures. So what you might expect, so this is just pure intuition. There's a lot of detail that I'll spare you. It's late at night. So imagine that the design improves. What do you expect will happen? The old product stock purchases, as the new product becomes more and more radical, what you'll do is start saying, look, I don't know what the cost of getting the product later is. I'm going to stock up now. So the more radical the design of this new product, the more, as a, as, a, as, a, um, as a distributor, you might stock up on the old product. But at the same time, the more you stock up with the old product, the lower your expected profits, because you're now gambling big. 